Welcome back to the Rev and Evan channel. If you haven't already done so or you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. Always leave a comment. Don't forget to like our videos. Today we've got the Dark Horse Mustang. We're at Charlotte Motor Speedway. We're going to do an abbreviated run at the Roval here. It's a fast track. As my man Sam from Ford said, it's still a big boy track. There's concrete. We're going through the banking wide open. It's going to be a fun ride. We got a whole slew of cars here. We got automatics, we got sticks, we got handling packs, non-handling packs. We're gonna drive them all. I got Abe with me. Then we're gonna take these things out on the road and see how capable they are. Dark Horse Mustang, come along for the ride. All right, we're all clear with the tractor. Uh, we can up. What you think of your first lap at a handling pack manual? Oh man, dark horse, I'm sold. I'm in my mind comparing it to my GT350 and thinking like, it, the overall grip level feels pretty much equal. I mean, the engine sounds different. Um, there's a lot of low end grunt too, so I was able to keep it in third. Like, I was only our first session. So I was experimenting and I was nowhere near the limit just getting used to the track again but probably my biggest takeaway is center of corner grip. Like the, the ability to roll the power on way earlier than I thought I'd be able to and just start to unwind the wheel and the car's not unsettled, it's not trying to understeer, it's not wonky in the back, just let it track out. And I was like, oh my God, I, when I go back out, I'm gonna experiment getting back to the throttle way earlier. And uh, so the other thing, so what you're feeling is uh, the eye shaft without any compliance, uh, rubber isolators. Um, the faster steer ratio, we stiffened up the bushings in the rear of the car, um, new Magna Ride strategy. Uh, so all of that is trying to make the car more settled, more connected. Right. Um, and uh, we spent a lot of time with the uh, brake controls team working on uh, trail braking, brake and turn for that same progressivity. Okay. So in addition to experimenting, you know, power on the way out, let me know what you think about the trail braking next time. Okay, cool. I, I did what you said, braking at the six, especially in the back over there. The rest of the course, you're not really using a whole lot of brake. There's a couple other sections where you're kind of just slowing the car down and yeah. getting the weight on the nose so you can turn it in. That's what we worked on, yeah. But that that back section, you're really, I mean, you said you said we're 125 miles an hour and you're coming down to a hairpin. So yeah. you're, you're really getting the car woed down. And I think on my last lap, I was up into fifth gear um, and I, I braked way too early. The six for me was just way, but safe, obviously on the first couple, times and for, yeah. you know if, if you're not used to the track or the car go ahead Jamie I was gonna say the one thing you were talking about that I was really interested in hearing was getting able to get back to the throttle that's a function of the Pirellis right they, they brought they got great mad act but they brought a lot of long act to the table yeah that was one of the things we actually had to learn with this car when we were at the track was holy crap can we get back to the throttle really early yeah and I, I really used the, the, um, the gator strips like I had it really on the apex hard and it didn't upset the car at all. We spent a lot of time Magna Ride tuning for that exact thing and adding that compliance there, but when you're transitioning fast, right. uh, putting the control back in. And I mean, I wasn't on throttle at that point where like, you know, a NASCAR yeah. guy, a road course guy probably could be on throttle at that right. point. I was being careful, um, but the car still felt totally under me, totally hooked to the track. And my God, the, the loading in the banking, I don't know how many Gs, have you guys like saw how many Gs well, you're you, carrying in the banking? You've got uh, VBox data from your lap, so you can take a look and tell me. Cool, right. um, I'm looking forward to get your impression on the uh, 10R too. We spent a lot of time uh, in the auto trans track mode, okay. making it uh, as fun out here as the manual. It's a different experience. Uh, it's just as fast, 
Um, and uh, yeah, and we actually leave it in D. We don't even uh, touch the paddles when we're oh, out here. Wow. Yeah, I mean the computer seems to do it better no matter yeah. what, what we're driving. Yeah, we're looking at uh, braking D-cell, uh, SWA, LADAC to determine when to shift and when when not to upset the car. Okay, you said, uh, what? explain that in, in layman's terms, what you just said. Uh, the transmission is on the CAN network and so it's looking at how hard you're braking, how hard you're turning, and determining when to do the downshifts. Uh. So when you're in a heavy braking zone, it's going to bang off some downshifts, but as you're trailing off the brake and starting to turn in, it's going to hold the gear for you. So, so it doesn't upset the car. I was going to say, so the back doesn't get light on it. You don't yeah. want it downshifting. And you can actually lose the front end in a shift, too, as, as you get oh, a really? torque. Uh, you okay. get the downshift, and if you end up in the torque band, you'll actually push the front end sometimes, too. We learned a lot of this from the Mach 1, and the uh, 10R Auto Trans okay. team has really brought their game up. And I'd be interested to see what you think compared to that uh, GT500 DCT, which is fantastic. While you're checking out our videos, don't forget to check out Testo.com. They've got all kinds of measuring equipment for HVAC, for automotive, all kinds of great stuff. We're gonna show you some cool Testo products in videos to come, but check them out at testo.com. You want to just rotate it and then straighten it out. Straighten it out. Looking at my corner. Set, throttle. Set. Turn it in, a little throttle here. Wait, 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 wait. Turn it all the way down. Looking around the corner. Take a set, turn it. Wide open. I should touch the brake just here to set it. Right down to the wall. Brake into the compression. Let it pop up. Out, out, out. Turn it down. Right at the apex. Same thing here. You want all the speed coming off the corner. So I'm looking all the way over there. And I'm down here. And then I would have been wide open that point yes he's he's waving it now yeah i think we got an extra extra lab in because uh, you caught up to the guy in front hell yeah what do you think of the automatic you can keep two hands on the wheel relax should have turned the radio on i know at the ac going what would have been the uh song of choice for the slap Ooh, get your motor on and i don't know <laughs> all right so that's a couple laps around the abbreviated Charlotte Roval. Hold on. Me and Abe enjoying the incredible Dark Horse Mustang. We just drove the automatic with the handling pack. And as you can probably see by the smile on our faces, it was a lot of fun. Abe, what'd you think? I think the automatic is great. Um, I didn't expect um, 
the shifting the way right. it does. Right. Compared to your car, 350 drive. Well, I think the I overall wish. performance, and again, without lap times, without back to back, I think the overall performance is very, very equal. I think different feel though. I mean, this motor sounds fantastic, but it just doesn't sound like that GT350 engine, and you get you know 8200 uh, character for sure. RPM worth the revs. The, the seat in my car is more of a racy seat, the GT350 track pack seat. My only critique is the steering's a little bit on the light side. Did you play around with the different modes? Why? I just went out in track mode. Okay, so, so yep. So yeah. Not basic, but very light. But I mean, to be able to take a car that you could drive on the street, come out to a track day like this, the braking is fantastic. I think the Magna Ride is probably one, the way that it's dialed in is probably. Um, better than my car just because it's more refined it's you know six seven years newer new software on, on, on the software but i mean I, I went over to rumble strips i was on early throttle never upset the car one bit very easy to drive fast which you know that's that's kind of what you guys are after right yeah yeah it's a car that's supposed to fly to the novice to make the experienced driver is just that much better well, I'm somewhere in the middle, so I was flattered by it. It's a great thing. Well, good. Yeah. Glad you enjoyed it. Thanks, Sam. What an absolutely fun day here at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Drove the dark horse handling pack, drove the dark horse base model, drove the manual and the automatic. So we had a lot of seat time today, and I'm going to tell you right now, this is a super fun car. If you've got one on order, you're going to love it. If you don't have one on order, you might want to think about getting one. Where does it stand in the hierarchy of Mustang? Well, it's not quite a GT500, but I would put it right there with a the Shelby GT350. Now, as a Shelby GT350 owner myself, I say this car handling-wise provides just as much fun as far as capability on track. I do love the sound of the GT350 flat plane crank engine. It revs a little bit higher than this engine, but you don't really feel a difference in horsepower, 500 versus 526. It's, it's not something you're really going to feel. The revised Magna Ride, because now we're quite a few evolutions into the Magna Ride, so they've really got it right. It's great on the GT350. It's even better in this car. Areas where the dark horse really shines, in my opinion, on the handling pack car with the P0 tire is the, the initial turn-in is accurate. Now GT350, it does it too. But as the car transitions through the middle of the corner, this thing was so utterly stable, I couldn't believe it. Went over the curbing here on the, uh, the inside strips, like the gator strips on the apex, never upset the car. Turn-in was accurate through the middle of the corner, the way the car rotated, where, where you're starting to unwind the wheel and roll the power back on. Dark Horse just eats up the track. The calibration on the Magna Ride, the calibration on throttle and the braking especially, it just, it makes you feel really good out there. It takes an average driver like myself and makes you feel like a hero. We drove, like I said, three different models and each one felt a little bit different. The stick, you know, you're really connected to the car. You're upshifting, you're downshifting. It has flat shifting. You can hold your foot flat to the floor and upshift above 5,000 RPM, it doesn't even upset the car. It's like a power shift. Um, as far as downshifting, it's got rev matching, so you really just have to brake, but you don't even blip the throttle, you can turn it off, but uh, it blips the throttle for you, make a nice smooth downshift. I was most impressed though with the automatic. It's gotta be 90 plus degrees out here today, and the automatic, even though it has two coolers, made the car so easy to drive. Your two hands on the wheel, you could left foot brake or right foot brake, but you're not even thinking about it. We went up through the banking wide open throttle and you're in the banking under a load with steering input. It's upshifting and it is not upsetting the car one bit. In the old days, an upshift might have caused the car to kick out, which, you know, 100 plus miles an hour, you don't want that happening. It just unsettles the car and it, it makes you feel unsettled as a driver. We approached over 130 miles an hour in the back straightaway, which is really cooking, coming into a hairpin, and the downshifts on the automatic, they're timed perfectly, and the computer knows, hey, I'm on a road course because you're in track mode, and when you turn in, it assumes you're gonna go back to throttle, so it kind of assesses 
your speed, your throttle input, your aggression on the brakes, and it picks the perfect gear. You just turn the wheel, start to unwind the wheel, you're in the right gear, roll the power on, and next thing you know, you're accelerating down the next straightaway. It was really intuitive. You never really had to think about it, where with the manual, especially if you're a novice, you're always thinking about, am I in the right gear? There were a couple corners here where in the manual, I took in second gear and it made the car slide a little bit. Third felt a little doggy. With the automatic, you're not even thinking about that. So I have to give the transmission a solid A plus on the automatic. I was not expecting it to be so good. Overall though, what a fun car. I gotta thank Ford for having us out here. Absolute blast on track. And we're gonna get to drive it on road, so we'll give you our report on how this thing handles on the streets. So come back for the next video.